Welcome back. Uh, now we have uh, Leona Roberts, who has been a member in the last assembly. Welcome, Leona. Thank you, Richard. Leona, um, what skills do you think you bring to the assembly and the new assembly, if, if elected? And what portfolios would you like to hold? Well, I think I've always been very clear that I don't have any particular expertise or or specialist knowledge uh, that you know that I can I can offer. I think um, there is something to be said though for being a generalist and yeah. being willing to just work hard uh, at the role. And I have absolute passion and commitment for it. So I think that that's that's a strength. Um, I'm very willing to listen to people and uh, have a real desire to try and help people. And I think that's also really crucial. Um, I think I've always tried to exercise empathy and understanding. And uh, so, you know, generally, I just want to try and do the best that I can, I think, for the Falklands and for our people. And in terms of the portfolios, I mean, a lot of good work happened in my portfolio, the public protection yeah. and environment side. Both of them um, worked extremely hard over the last four years. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't have any objection to holding that portfolio again, given the chance. Um, but if not, I guess my second choice would be education. I was really keen on last time too, uh, particularly as that involves culture and heritage, which is something yeah. very dear to my heart. Yeah. What are the main issues you think that the new assembly is going to have to confront them when they first sit down together? I, I think there's a huge amount coming. Yeah, there, is, um, yes. there are ongoing challenges and far too many to list here, but I think some of the, the main ones, environmental issues have to be at yes. the top of our agenda. And that's going to be challenging because, as has been set out in the strategy, there is so much to do and there's a lot that we just don't know yet. So, so that's going to be a massive challenge and it's going to need funding. Otherwise, it's simply we won't make the progress we need. Um, continuing to upgrade and maintain our infrastructure, absolutely key. We're still catching up on years and years and years of underinvestment. Um, things are falling down all over the place and, and that needs that work needs to go on. But again, it requires money and it requires capacity that we don't always necessarily have. Um, and um, I guess in the other side of things, COVID hasn't gone away. And I think that that's going to be um, an ongoing issue for this assembly for you know probably the next year or more as we start to move towards reopening, building confidence in the public um, and kind of reinvigorating and getting our tourism industry back on track yes. again to that great place where it was. So those are, I guess, three um, priority areas yeah. for me. When first selected, members are very aware of uh, what the people's opinions are because they come and talk to you and you have public meetings and everything else. But uh, once once elected, how do you intend to keep in touch? I see Facebook has been used quite a bit, but unfortunately it seems to have been used as a soapbox by a, quite a small number of people and not necessarily um, the, the general opinion of the public. I think Facebook has had benefits, definitely. I think the, the Q&A page that the last assembly set up was very well intentioned. I'm not sure that it was as successful as uh, perhaps the optimistic uh, the optimists uh, among us, like me, thought it would be. Um, it became very vitriolic, and I've heard from an awful lot of people that they actively disengaged from it um, because they, they they just got so tired and depressed by it. Um, but I think Facebook will continue to have a role, not necessarily in that form. Um, and it is a good way of, of people getting in touch because a lot of people are not comfortable with coming to public meetings and speaking publicly and asking their questions. Um, but obviously those those more traditional forms like public meetings and engagement have to carry on and can be really successful, particularly in camp, I have to say. I, mm. I love camp public meetings. Um, but I think, you know, there's, there's always ways to try and improve things. And um, we are very accessible as MLAs. As you will know, you get nobbled over the frozen peas. And, uh, you know, if you're, you're out at a social event, people do ask questions. And that's great. Um, I mean, I would always continue to be as accessible as possible. and. Uh, you know, always willing to meet with people, whether they're voters or not, yeah, to be honest. Absolutely. Um, I think it's important to hear yeah. the broad range of views. Yeah. Um, there's a number of major infrastructure capital projects under, well, proposed or underway and such like, such as the port, the power station, Tussock House, those sort of things. How should these be funded? Yeah, I mean, this is a huge question for us because we are in a fortunate position that we've built up over the years really healthy reserves. And we want to try and maintain reserves at a level that give us confidence. Yeah. Should our fairly narrow uh, industry base have bad years, you know, we need to have the buffer there. Um, but so 
we don't want to deplete those reserves to the point where you know, you're really limited in what you yeah. can do operationally and, and in capital programme as well. So I understand people's concerns about borrowing. It feels quite uncomfortable for us because it's not a position we've been in before. But with something like the port, the sheer scale of the project means that we really need to consider this um, because it, the other things have to happen as well. So I'm, I'm not opposed to borrowing. I'm not entirely comfortable with it, but, but I think it's probably the solution. And, you know, the, I think there, there's always conversations to be had about inward investment and how that can be achieved, uh, you know, without giving away our faculties too much, and, um, and about sort of public-private partnership. But I've not seen anything come forward, you know, in these past four years that, that would have fulfilled, um, yeah. Yeah. you know, those opportunities. It's been suggested uh, that uh, members spend too much time travelling abroad or overseas and not enough time on local issues. Do you have a comment? And if you're elected, are you willing to travel? Yeah, well, as the MLA who probably had to travel most in the last assembly, because I was on the executive of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, so I had to be away an awful lot. One year in particular, I lost track of how many times I had to go. Yeah. Um, it is very, very challenging and it is wearing and it has a massive effect on your private life and it's, it's really difficult. Um, there are a couple of things I would say, though. Firstly, is that the, the other work doesn't stop while you're away. No. You might be in a conference all day and in meetings all day and have a dinner at the, uh, at the end of the night, at the end of the, the day. Um, but then when you get back to your hotel room, your emails are still there to check and, and to respond to. All that other work, you know, whether it's Exco papers being sent through, everything has to be done. Um, but the other side of it, and the really important piece of it for me, is that... This is how we get the Falklands message out. Argentina isn't going to stop promoting their message. And it has, these last four years have absolutely cemented in my mind the importance of international diplomacy yeah. because you meet people in countries that should know better and you would think would know better, but they don't. They've, they've heard the Argentine narrative. They don't know much about the Falklands. Why would they? That's right. And so it's our job and a critical part of it to get there and to inform them. And to be perfectly honest, if we're not willing to put in the effort, then we risk paying a substantial price. So if elected again, I would never want to have to go away as much as I did, particularly in 2019. Um, but, but I would absolutely be willing to pull my weight. It's that important. One of the issues which is out on the streets and everybody's talking about them is salmon farming. Do you have an opinion on this? Yeah, I do. I mean, I, I think, you know, diversification of our economy is really important. Um, but everything that I've seen so far leads me to believe that I would struggle to support um, the introduction of a, a non-native species, a voracious non-native species, into, uh, into the Falklands. And so I think the environmental risks and the potential for long-term economic damage as well uh, is, is too great for me. Yes. Um. The uh, communication speeds are something which is discussed and such like, both in Stanley and Camp. How can the Falcons gain this, a similar quality of service that people expect around the world now? Well, I mean, that's difficult, isn't it? Because there's not a, a queue of, of companies lined up no. wanting to service the Falklands. We're three and a half thousand people. And, uh, you know, that's a small village in the UK. Um, but, you know, technology is moving fast and we have to be absolutely willing to explore all our options and understand as well, you know, if there are implications for the sort of basic services, you know, and for, for maintaining the infrastructure here. You know, things like Starlink sound really interesting. And... Um, Although, you know, although the last assembly uh, committed, you know, quite a substantial amount of funds to improve capacity, yeah. you know, it, it, the speed is still the issue, and that really limits innovation. So, you know, I, I, it's way out of my um, my knowledge sphere, but you know, it's it's one that we really have to keep progressing. Can we talk about climate change? Um, it's becoming an issue that just can't be ignored. I don't think anybody says it's not happening now, or very few people. What steps should the Falklands take to become more carbon neutral? Um, and giving renewable energy has actually developed in leaps and bounds in the last few years. Are we hoping that the new power station, are you hoping the new power station will rely more on renewables and less on conventional diesel? Yeah, I mean, climate change is huge. It's 
something that we can't opt out of. You know, yeah. we might be a tiny player uh, in a global crisis, but we have to do our bit. Um, so, you know, I think I think this is this is the time. The time was probably years ago, but you know, yes. we really have reached the point where it yeah. has to be addressed. Um, so. Delighted that we got. We now have an environment department. I still think it should be a directorate, but that's another point. Um, and an environment strategy, just setting out some of the ways that we can progress. Renewable energy is going to be key in driving down our carbon footprint. Um, the power station is a, a tricky one because yes, yes. the first priority for for power and electrical is that they have a robust and resilient system that can provide for the community. Because without power, everything else stops. Um, so, you know, I think there the almost certainly will be diesel still in, in the immediate future. But I think, yes, absolutely, there needs to be the capacity to, um, you know, to build in more renewables yeah. further down the yeah. line and hopefully sooner than the target that we have in, in the environment strategy. That's there as a placeholder, but we should really push that. Yes. Yeah. There's been a lot of criticism regarding pensions that the old age pensions but still fall well behind the living wage. Um, in view of the fact that many of the people now who are pulling, taking pension, taking their pensions were not able to take out private uh, um, or um, uh, schemes and so they, they, you know, they really are struggling. How, how do we deal with this? Pensions again are a global issue, being it is a global you know issue, faced yes. by uh, sort of modern societies all over the world. It's a huge problem. People are living longer. There are all sorts of issues, and I can't pretend to you know to have a, a full grip on all of them. But it does worry me. I know what I see worries me, and um, I expressed my views at the last budget round and before about about pensions. Um, I have great concerns about them. We're promised that the actuarial actuarial review that is coming up. Um, you know, we'll be looking at this and, and providing some options, but that's still going to take a really strong, um, some strong decisions. Absolutely. Because, you know, if, if we increase pensions, of course, it has a knock-on effect over the long term to government finances. But, you know, I'm absolutely opposed to driving people down the, the social welfare route. Um, I don't think that's the answer. I don't no, think no, it's appropriate. I'm afraid we've run out of time, but thank ah. you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Richard.